So we were making pancakes, now let's make some molecules. Here's a recipe for making ammonia. Why would you want to make ammonia? Well, maybe you're manufacturing ammonia. <laughs> so the, uh, just go to the store and buy it, right? Um, here's our reaction. It takes three hydrogen molecules and one nitrogen molecule to make two ammonia molecules. So this is like the pancake thing. But here we have two ingredients, hydrogen and nitrogen, and we're making ammonia. So we can write conversion factors relating these quantities. We call these mole ratios. Because if it's three molecules of hydrogen to make two molecules of ammonia, then you could scale it up, right, and say three moles of hydrogen will make two moles of ammonia. Let's go back to the pancakes. Two eggs gets five pancakes. Two dozen eggs gets how many dozen pancakes? Five dozen, right? We're just multiplying everything by a dozen. So we look at this equation, chemical equation, and we see quantities in terms of molecules or in terms of moles. So we get mole ratios. We see that three moles of hydrogen would equal two moles, two moles of ammonia. Um, we, we might also be interested in the relationship between nitrogen and ammonia. We can write it out this way as, you know, this equals that, or we can write it out in a form that looks more like a conversion factor. We could see, say that there's one mole of nitrogen gas per two moles of ammonia. Or we could say three moles of hydrogen per one mole of ammonia. I'm sorry, nitrogen. One mole of nitrogen. Do you see what I'm doing there? So this, just insert mole as your unit, and this, insert, oops, wrong place. There's an understood one there, one mole, and this guy, insert mole. You can take any two of those and make a conversion factor. Yes? I did three moles of hydrogen over one mole of nitrogen. Well, if, if I had a certain amount of nitrogen, <coughs> let's say I had um, five moles of nitrogen. I'll just stay with the red. Five moles of nitrogen. And I want to know how many moles of hydrogen do I need to mix with that. Then I could multiply by three moles of hydrogen per one mole of nitrogen and find, oh, I need 15 moles of hydrogen. Didn't plan that very well, did I? Because moles of nitrogen cancel out. Like with the pancakes, if I said, well, I've got, you know, I've got five uh, or I've got six eggs how many cups of flour do I need? <coughs> I'm scaling up my recipe. How much baking soda do I need? And so with stoichiometry and using these mole ratios, we can find the relationship between two of the reactants, two of the products, or one product and one reactant. Any combination. I could ask the question, well, if I want, you know, 20 moles of ammonia, how many moles of hydrogen do I need to start with? Well, how many moles of nitrogen do I need to start with? And so we can get the relationships between all the quantities. Does that make sense? It's an important idea to grasp. Pardon me? Yeah. So mole-to-mole -mole conversions. Oh. 
It says animations on it. Interesting. Okay, I think those are all the questions. So looking at this, um, we can answer questions like this. If we have three moles of nitrogen and plenty of hydrogen, how much ammonia can we make? So we can think about this in terms of dimensional analysis. This is what we're given, three moles of nitrogen, and we're asking how much ammonia. So we're going from moles of, of nitrogen to moles of ammonia. And with these mole ratios, it's always going to be one step, which is really nice, right? So we start with three moles of nitrogen, and we want to multiply by moles of ammonia and divide by moles of nitrogen. And this chapter is where dimensional analysis comes back big time. So if you are still not quite grasping that, now's a really good time to ask me questions and finally figure it out. Because you're all capable of figuring it out. It just might take some work. So we use dimensional analysis to tell us where the units go because we want moles of nitrogen to cancel with moles of nitrogen. Then we need to know the relationship between moles of ammonia and moles of nitrogen. And that comes from the balanced chemical equation. There's no number in front of the nitrogen because chemists don't like to write the number one. But there would be a one there. So one mole of nitrogen will create two moles of ammonia. So these numbers come straight out of the balanced chemical equation. We do the math, we end up with six. Six moles of ammonia. Does that make sense? Here's another question that had nice whole numbers. How many moles of nitrogen are needed to completely react with 7.13 moles of hydrogen? 7.13 moles of hydrogen. We want to know how many moles of nitrogen. So we're going to multiply by moles of nitrogen. We're going to divide by moles of hydrogen. So our units work out. The units tell us, are we multiplying or dividing? When we go up to our formula, I'm sorry, our chemical equation, and we see that one mole of nitrogen requires three moles of hydrogen. So 7.13 error. 7.13 divided by 3. So how many significant figures should my answer have? 3. 2.38. That's a bad 2. 2.38 moles of nitrogen. It's really messy. Hmm? How did I get the moles of hydrogen, the 3? From the balanced chemical equation. Up here. Three moles of hydrogen are needed to react with one mole of nitrogen. Okay? And for every three moles of hydrogen, we'll make two moles of ammonia. So the relationships between all of them are in there. And to make those mole ratios, you get your units where you need them to be, and then you go to the equation and you look, well, what's in, what number is in front of hydrogen? That's the number I put in front of moles of hydrogen in my conversion factor, my mole ratio. What number's in front of nitrogen? Well, there isn't a number. Well, it would be the number one. If you didn't write the one in your equation, would it still be okay? Yeah, because if you divide by one or multiply by one, nothing's going to happen. Any other questions about that one? I don't know how all these animations showed up. I do not want animations. 
yeah, it was just it's turned on automatic animation somehow. Lovely. So here's an, another example. Oh, and we're missing the question part. There we go. Um, water is formed when hydrogen gas reacts explosively with oxygen gas according to the balanced equation O2 plus 2H2 gives 2H2O. Pardon me? That's a good question. Shouldn't the H2O be a liquid? Okay, this reacts explosively. When you light a match to a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen, it goes kaboom. There's heat involved. It's not at room temperature, and the water formed is in the gas state. So, good question. How many moles of water result from the complete reaction of 24.6 moles of oxygen? And assume that there's more than enough hydrogen. So it's like when you're cooking, you know, and we said, you've got eight eggs. How many pancakes can you make? Well, we're assuming you have enough baking soda, baking powder, and, and flour. So we're given this number here. So 24.6 moles of oxygen. And we want to find moles of water. So I'm going to multiply by moles of water, and I'm going to divide by moles of oxygen. The path that I'm doing here is moles of O2 to moles of H2O. And I'm not always going to write that path out for you anymore, because uh, it's a one-step conversion, and it's just not that complicated. So 24.6 moles of oxygen, we want to multiply by moles of hydrogen, divide by moles of oxygen, so that our units work out. Then we go to our balanced chemical equation, we look at oxygen, and what number's in front of it? It's an implied one. So I'm going to put a one down here. And what's in front of water? It's a two. So I'm going to put a two here. So what is that? 49.2 yes. moles of H2O. Is that making sense? Dimensional analysis meets balanced chemical equation.